Hey everyone, Adam with Antique Automotive Service. Today I'm working on a 70 GS Stage 1 Coupe, obviously. Um, just piecing the thing together and today I'm going to be working on getting this instrument cluster installed and uh, just kind of a quick rundown. I'm just going to kind of install it and kind of show you what really is the best way to do it and what usually people run into and why things happen the way they do. Um, but if you've ever done this, it's a giant pain in the ass and you know, without basically removing the wire harness with the cluster, it's almost an impossible job and you'll never get it back in right. Uh, so I'm starting from scratch and I'll show you how I've got it set up right now. I'm installing the whole thing as a unit and it's much easier, easier that way. There's a little bit of feeding and farting around with wires to get it in the right direction, but uh, the way it's set up is very weird. Let me show you. Okay, so somehow I've got to get this thing into here with two hands and the reason I'm uh, putting this thing together as a unit is because it's got these hooks here that basically kind of funnel the harness directly behind the instrument cluster to keep it here and if it's if it's just kind of flopping around you have a really hard time getting this thing pushed as far in as it needs to go so um, Really, the best way is just to get the whole harness installed on everything, get everything plugged in, get everything tightened down. All your, uh, your everything that goes on, th on this instrument cluster needs to be on the thing before you decide to install it. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. Ugh. I basically just need to get these really long sections started. This is the console harness. And it's just going to kind of flop down here. The rest of this here is uh, here's the door switch um, and courtesy light. I'll kind of just sure get behind this bracket here. Oh, this sucks. What a pain in the arse. Hook it back here. Then I've got 10,000 vacuum lines. Not nearly as bad as that 65 rib, but still a big pain in the butt. So we've got two vacuum lines that go outside through a hole that I've got set up right there. And uh, probably a good idea just to get rid of that. Ugh. Grommet got installed already. Just put it up there. Okay, what did I say? We got one that goes to the heater control valve and one that goes to the vacuum can. These two are going to go to the uh, uh, the cowl vent. This goes to the uh, heater box, and this blue one goes to the little vacuum can on the side of the box over here. Just have to feed it as you go. Try not to break everything in the process. There's this uh, this red cable that controls a door in the heater box. I think it's the heat uh, versus cold blend door. Box. 
instead of switch control control. I'll go here. Do, 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 do. It's a slow, but it's a lot easier taking the stuff out and putting it back in. I uh, ended up finding a good wire harness from a Skylark, a 70s Skylark, to replace this one because the old one was, well, it was all right. It had a few little cut sections and whatnot, and this one was a lot easier just to pop in. I did have to repin the uh, the gauge section because uh, the pins are different because if you have actual gauges versus idiot lights, they're in a different lineup. So FYI, if you want to change the gauges, you either have to have an adapter harness or repin the wires in your connector. Uh, another thing that I've got to do before I smash this thing in here. Connect the vent. are falling asleep. Ouch. Slow go. Slowly heat it all in. No reason to go fast. This stuff is, there's a lot of stuff in here that's very fragile. You don't want to force anything. When you're asking for trouble. Make sure you don't pull anything off when you're pulling the wires through. Spinometer's a little, I pulled the spinometer too far through and I need to put it back a little bit. See how it kind of, when you pull the spinometer through, it pulls the instrument cluster back. Not stuck anymore. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Ah. Ah. Perfect. Ta-da! Let me show you a little closer about what this. This uh, instrument cluster is all about. All right, so we got actual gauges, speedometer, no speed alert, um, and 24 hour clock. This is for uh, if you either have a convertible top, cruise control, or um, defrost. And before you put all this stuff in, when you put it together, I mean, I cleaned everything up. This is a brand new instrument cluster from parts place or Todd at stage one restoration this is where I got it from and the aftermarket cluster is basically perfect in every way except this black inside I call it an, in, an out outline for all the all the wood grain that does not come painted black so I had to mask all this stuff off and paint it and uh, make it make that way before I put this thing together. So that is factory correct. There's only one other thing that I don't like about this is that the lower holes here, let's see if I can get you in here so you can see it, are completely, they're open all the way through and they should be beveled so that when you put a screw in there, it doesn't just go through. Doesn't make any sense why they did that. But we're basically all the way in. There's nowhere else to go. All the holes line up real nice. So, yeah, we're, we're in good shape. Oh, yeah, and I was mentioning, when you put all the stuff together, 
get it all cleaned up. Make sure every bulb works back there because they're all impossible to get to once this thing's together. Make sure your switches work. Um, headlight switch. This stuff has to be in good working order because it's almost impossible to get to once it's closed. And uh, same thing for all your other stuff. Here's your cigarette lighter. And then I also have my indicator guy, which I'm not exactly sure how this is gonna work with a console, but I guess it moves, I don't know. I'll educate myself at some point, but yeah, cool. One other point of order is this, uh, this console harness is part of the harness. It doesn't just plug in, so if you, if you want to convert to a harness or to convert to a console and shifter as opposed to the column shifter, you've got to do some splicing and dicing to get this, these three wires you've got, or four wires, you've got your neutral safety and then your reverse uh, light switch that uh, needs to be brought into where the shifter is. And let's see, what else was I going to think about? Uh, this does, I think, it has to be an AC uh, deal too, not 100% sure. But this one actually had AC, so I'm not worried about it. And uh, this clock works. All I basically did was take it apart and lube the backside, file the points, put power to it and make sure it worked for a couple minutes and then installed it. And we should be good there. While we're looking in, uh, in here and starting to connect things up, I've got this red control wire. This is on AC car. It only has a red wire or a red cable on the AC cars and on non-AC cars it has blue, red, and green that all connect to up to different doors, blend doors on this thing to, uh, you know, do its thing. But anyway, uh, these things are typically broken, so it's very difficult to find one that's not. And this one actually came off of something else. I don't know what it came off of, but it... Uh, I found it and it's here. Uh, so I, I took it and the other wire, the other cable was connected backwards of this. So this little adjustment sleeve was over closer to the heater control. And there's a big heavy turn that it has to make right as it comes out of the connection and come this way to connect over to here. And if this control cable is set backwards of this, it wants to break right here. So I like to put them in with this adjustment here as opposed to over by the heater control. There's the correct way to put that in. And so you've got to have some sort of a little holder on her that keeps that cable on there. I don't know what these are called, but it's a little press on, I don't know, speed nut, something like that. And I'm gonna try to do this. And it literally just presses on, just like that. Moving on, I goobered up. This guy is supposed to go through. Oh crap, there's a, there's a hole back there somewhere that you can't see, there it is. It goes to the uh, blower motor resistor, blower motor, and uh, there's an AC relay that sits on the firewall that those plug into. So this whole thing's gotta go outside the car. Here's the hole I'm looking at, and this, uh, that grommet will eventually go in there. So it, I mean, kinda sorta, I've gotta clean this up a little bit. It goes all the way over here to the resistor and the blower motor, and then your connections for AC relay, uh, yeah, AC relay go here. This one, I'm blanking for some reason. I think it's his, it's supposed to go the relay as well, but I'll figure that out later. Hey, nail head lookalike. There are also two vacuum lines that come out of here. One is for the uh, feed for the H HVAC system, and then you've got the long guy that goes to the heater control valve that sits right here. While I'm on vacuum lines, there's this little guy that has a little coupling in it, and it goes to that, that vacuum line that's sitting right there by itself. Here's the last vacuum line connection here, and these hoses are set up kind of already. They're pre, 
taped and everything so you kind of know which one goes where one's longer than the other one as they sit so it's a lot easier to figure out which one goes where i've got that little center hose connected up there and it goes to a uh uh there's a little vacuum pot on the back side of this heater box and then the last hose connection goes right there on that little nipple Oh, hey, it's tomorrow. I had a little snafu last night on my scheduling and uh, got a reminder on my phone that I had to be somewhere in an hour. And I was an hour away. So that was scary. Anyway, uh, let's work on some wiring here. We've got several things that need to go this direction. We've got the uh, buzzer relay, which is already mounted up top under the dashboard here. This is the uh, glove box light. This is a courtesy light that hangs under the dash here. And we've got the, um, the door jam switch. And then I've, obviously I've got our console wiring here that I'm not, exact, not exactly sure where it wants to lay. Because I have to be conscious of where it comes down. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to consult the manual on that, but let's get the easy stuff out of the way. It's 172 times easier to do this with all this crap not installed in the dashboard. You just have to be conscious of where you route the stuff because it could get in the way of the radio install or the heater ducts and stuff like that. This is going to go right here. Uh, the courtesy light and the door jam switch. There's the hole for that. Make sure everything's where it needs to be. I'm going to stick that right through there right now. Just be careful you don't want to shut the door on that metal clip. Okay, so I've got everything going over that way that I need to run. These are coming from this aftermarket speaker that I put in. Ah, ashtray light is here. Whoa, what's going on? That needs to be rerouted. Right, meow. Okay, there's that. There's something else here. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's the radio power switch. <laughs> what am I missing? Nothing. I think I'm good. So we'll move on over to this direction here. Ugh. Okay, there's quite a bit of fun that gets to happen on this. This is all uh, steering column here and uh, uh, um, that thing, uh, kick down, I think. Now I can't remember. Anyway, um, brake light switch. This goes to the rear harness. This is the uh, door jam switch on the left side, and it's a bit of a bear to get to, so what you probably have to do is take a, a fish wire, fish it back there, and then pull the wire through, connect up your switch. That way, uh, parking brake light switch, dimmer switch that gets bolted to the floor, and then this kind of, this flops around, but there's a clip on the parking brake assembly that it's supposed to go to. So, yeah, um, let's get this going. Oh, yeah, and uh, this guy here attaches to the firewall, and it's got a little foam um, seal there, and you, there's a one ugly 
a terminal there that I'm gonna have to clean up real quick. But I'm probably gonna wanna go through these real quick before I put it in there. It kinda looks like the uh, radio one is not happy. But I'll check them all before I do that. I'll just check continuity between one side and another. And we'll put the new fuses in if we do. I'm gonna try to show you real quick how I test these fuses. Sometimes just a visual test is not enough and they'll look good, but uh, they won't test good. So basically you wanna put it, put your multimeter on the ohms or it's a little omega symbol and you pretty much put it on anywhere, but I do it the lowest, the lowest reading setting or whatever may have you. But it should it'll go down to you know not uh ol open line or whatever you want to call it so so far i was correct on the radio reading reading open on the radio one. They do have some resistance, but it's pretty low. And that's it. So the radio, let's see, yeah, nope. Gauges, directional, radio, yeah. Radio is open. So that one needs to be replaced, but we are good on all the rest of them. Okay, now that we've got that taken care of, you have to have a very specific screw to install these. It's this this hole here and that hole up top. They're uh, specific, specific, specific length, and they've got some schmutz. Uh, well, they were, they were completely covered before they were installed, uh, but these are the bolts. I'm going to have to clean them up, and you can either choose to ignore it, um, or install these and seal it from the outside, but you know, generally most of these cars aren't going to see a lot of water, so you may choose to ignore that or not. It's up to you. Just do whatever you want to seal them up, but those are the screws. That's what that looks like installed. There's um, this little ground wire up here that is on your harness and the brake light switch. This is one-handed shuffle is kind of difficult. Snap, snap, dunzo. This guy is going to be installed here in a bit. There's your uh, door jam switch, dimmer, and this is like a power accessory plug and it goes up into the dash or the uh, fuse panel that's what it looks like from the outside and you can see that uh, that kind of foam seal there this is the parking brake um, bolts here and those were kind of undercoated at the factory just to seal up these holes and I think some of this stuff might have had some scuzz on it as well but you can see how those screws would benefit from some some seal as well at that point we were ready to secure this thing down get secure or get situated so i don't have to get a charlie horse uh i've got one two three four uh kind of like hex head screws with a big built-in, kind of built-in washer, captured washer. And then we've got two screw holes here, two screw holes here. And those are just regular screws. But this thing is as far in as it can go. So there's nothing binding or holding this thing out. You don't need to torque it to 60 foot pounds. Just get it nice and snug.
Okay, now, there's short screws and long screws. I got two short and two long. And for the life of me, I can't remember how it's supposed to go. I think these are the long screws because there's a little bit of a distance I've got to cover to be able to get back. Uh, can't see. Go. go just snug it up to where you can see this kind of flattens out to the metal dash panel same thing on this side it's pretty close already so you just want to kind of snug up snug it up there and we've got two short screws that go in here but there's a problem with the aftermarket dash panel it, it is a big hole, and I think I mentioned earlier in this video, but these heads are very small. So I'm going to run into my stash and see if I can find some larger, larger heads on these things. Ugh, success! Found two. They're actually chrome screws, but uh, they've got much bigger heads. Problem is, they're not black, so I took some 99-cent Walmart paint and... Uh, Painting them flat black. There's the hole for that one. And then again, I just well, just snug it. Just snug it. You don't need to go ham on it. Trying not to ruin my quality paint job on the bolt heads. I mean, I think in theory you could probably put the small headed bolts in, just put them into a point where it looks like they're in. It won't do anything though. Honestly, you know, they may look better. I'm going to take this one out and put one of the old ones in and see what it looks like. Yeah, I'm going to do that because you can see these bolt heads on these larger head screws and I don't like that. Put the original ones back in. They're not going to do anything, but they look right. So I'm just going to stick them in there. This thing's dusty. Over. Everything's good there. It looks like I'm a little bit out of adjustment on this. So it's, it's the, the, door, the door has hit its limit. And I'm not all the way open, so I need to take that that little adjusting sleeve over there on the back side and back it off a little bit until this thing goes all the way open. Well, that's all there is to this one. Um, I basically, I'm not sure exactly what the point is to this video, but I just kind of wanted to show you how much fun it is to work with this, this instrument cluster, because man, if you're trying to do this, and to pull the instrument, your cluster away from the wiring harness and all that other stuff while it's in the car, it's really such a pain in the butt. It's almost worth it just to strip the whole dash out of it. That way you can get into everything, replace bulbs if you need to, and uh, you know clean up wiring and do all that other fun stuff, and then it reinstall it as a unit. And uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, let me know if there's something you guys would specifically like to see on this project. I mean, we're, we're working from the ground up on this thing. Um, not exactly sure where I'm gonna go with it next. Um, I really probably need to get this paint cut and buffed before I start really throwing stuff on the car because I've got uh, window sweeps have to go on, and then the in interior glass, and then I can work from there. I probably wanna put the headliner in after that. And I've got wiper system to do, a um, bunch of other stuff. I mean, it's just, it's endless here. So anyway, let me know what you want to see. And uh, I guess I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.